One of the most compelling things about working with 360 content is that you can work with it in standard projects and choose the portion of the sphere you want your audience to see. The idea is that you've already captured everything around you. Now it's simply a matter of choosing your composition after the fact. Let's take a look. Here I have a 1080 project open with two GoPro clips. I'll select a 360 clip from the browser and press E to append the clip in the timeline. The first thing you'll notice is that the 360 viewer goes dark after the clip is added to the timeline, but you still have access to all the spherical data. With a play it over the clip, open the inspector. Whenever you edit an equirectangular clip into a standard project, a set of controls labeled orientation appears. These controls are nearly identical to the reorientation controls for 360 projects. The difference here is that you're not reorienting the sphere relative to the viewer, but orienting the viewer relative to the sphere. Since the 360 viewer is not needed, I'll press Option Command 7 to hide it. And I'll hide the browser by pressing Command Control 1. Click the Orientation button to enable it, then move your mouse over the viewer and drag around. You can look in any direction, up, down, left, right. All the pixels are there. You just need to choose your composition. I'll click the Reset button to reset the controls. Because we have access to pixels in every direction, we can animate the composition using a few keyframes. Press the up arrow key to move the play to the start of the clip, then pan around the frame looking for a good starting frame. I like this frame at 121 degrees. I also want the shot a bit wider, so I'll drag the field of view slider until the value is 115 degrees. Looking at the horizon, it looks a bit off. I'll enable the horizon guides, then adjust the roll amount to minus two degrees. Next, I'll set keyframes for all four properties. In Final Cut Pro 10.4, the keyframes turn yellow, making them much easier to see. I'll move the play at three quarters of the way into the clip, then drag downward on the pan value to move the image along the Y axis. I like this framing at around minus 45 degrees. I also want to be a bit tighter at the end of the pan, so I'll decrease the field of view to 100. I'll disable the horizon guide, then play back the clip to see how it looks. The pan works great, and the movement is smooth, with nice easing at the head and tail of the clip. I should point out that I'm working with an 8K equirectangular clip, which effectively gives me 1080p resolution when viewed in a headset with a 90 degree field of view. If you're working with a 4K equirectangular clip, your viewing resolution will be 720p. Spherical video resolution is not the same as flat video resolution because all those pixels are mapped to a sphere and your viewer is only seeing a portion of the image at any given time. In the effects browser, you'll find a new set of 360 related effects. These effects were specifically formulated for spherical videos in that they won't negatively affect the stitch seams. I'll drop the 360 degree sharpen effect onto the clip. This is a good filter to use on lower resolution clips because it increases the perceived resolution by sharpening some of the softness. If I toggle the effect on and off, you can see that it has a net positive effect on the image. Just don't go crazy with it and crank up the amount, otherwise your clip will look highly processed. I'm actually going to reduce the amount of sharpening to 0.5. That looks great. Final Cut Pro 10.4 gives you powerful 360 editing tools, even if you're working in standard projects. If you're interested in going further in your understanding of these new 360 editing tools, check out my 360 video editing course at rippletraining.com. It's available for streaming or download, and it includes the media for following along.